Thank you, Alan, for this stone. I'll keep it with me. So, I'm here to spill my heart out to you, which I'm so lucky to do because I received my heart from someone else, a donor. I received this greatest gift possible, and I'm humbled and endlessly grateful for this ultimate demonstration of generosity. I was 32 when I had a stroke. Um, it's changed my life completely. Uh, I couldn't walk the stairs without resting every couple of steps. And I lived like this for 10 years. You know, I had children growing up. Uh, I was 32 and I was a shadow of a person. Uh, I got several operations, including a defibrillator fitted here. This was my guardian angel, because every now and then I fell in a coma and my angel would revive me. It was living in the utmost fear. Death was always very close. In 2007, I, got in, I was in hospital, waiting for a heart for nine months. And I was lucky. Very, very lucky. But then, it's a sad thing to know that someone had to die to keep me alive. I comfort myself in knowing that I didn't have anything to do with her death. Yes, I have the heart of a woman, the sweetest woman. I wouldn't want it to be a man. <laughs> uh, Her husband decided to donate her organs, and without this kindness, I wouldn't be standing here, of course. Um, well, the strange thing about my new heart is that I don't have a nerve connection to my brains anymore. Your heart is connected to your subconscious brain. Did you know that? Well, mine's not. Mine is beating purely autonomous on warm blood and oxygen. It speeds up frequency because of hormones and because of lack of oxygen due to lactic acids that come in the bloodstream. So if you go up the stairs, your brain will tell your heart to speed up the frequency. Well, my heart doesn't have a clue. So if I go up the stairs, my heart starts beating slowly, and when I reach the second floor, clever receptors in my heart will notice lack of oxy oxygen due to lactic acids in the bloodstream, and my heart will uh, increase the, the, freak uh, the, the, the pace, start beating quicker. A bit late, unfortunately. So without a nerve connection to my brains, this makes me think about deeper things like who am I? What am I without this connection to my heart? Can I reach my soul? Luckily, I found out that, no, because everyone understands that the heart has a, a big reputation for being the spiritual essence of, of us being. Luckily, I found out that uh, this is more or less symbolic and that my soul is the total awareness of the person who I am, right? And I'm blessed because I have something extra. I can feel her beating every day. When I wake up, when I'm on my bike, 
when I walk my dog on the beach, when I play hockey with my friends, I'm very much alive, thanks to her. <laughs> you know, when I got the heart, I felt it was the heart of a woman. Okay, I have a 15% chance, so it was a good guess. But my doctor confirmed this feeling. So after I got out of the hospital, I uh, started searching for her on the internet. I looked for police reports, death notices, a church list of deceased, etc. And every time, the same name came up. So, on a beautiful day in early spring, I got on my motorbike and I drove through a grave. I was standing there. I couldn't be 100% sure, but again, I felt that she was the one. <laughs> uh, two years later, I published my book, which was picked up by the newspapers, and uh, I was a guest in a well-known Dutch TV show, Paul Wittemann. And the next day, the phone rang. It was her husband, and he told me, I think you are the one I was so glad he found me. He was so glad he, he found me. And a few days later, we met at her grave. We started with an emotional embrace. And uh, it was a beautiful, unique experience. Because I could express my gratitude, and he could find some comfort in seeing the good result of his good deed and her good deed. It helped him with his grief. But I noticed that for him it was more difficult to cope with the concept of her heart living inside of me. He had lost the love of his life, and I only gained from it. It was painful. But then, I'm very glad that he told me that although he'd lost, he saw the goodness of it. For me, that's a symbol of pure love. So it won't surprise you that I have a mission. That is to tell the world about the importance of organ donation. It saves lives. That's the most wondrous gift you can ever give. I founded a new organization, Dona Dona. This is a platform for relatives of of donors and their recipients who are looking for each other, to actually find each other via our database. Because why deny the need to express gratitude and the need to, f to feel comfort in, in, in this, this good deed that, uh, that has been going on? So uh, I think in this new medical era where uh, uh, it's possible that life flows between people in a symbiotic way. We should uh, recognize or accept the fact that, uh, that the human values have to follow. I want to make organ donation something human and not just clinical. Okay. Uh, you know. Dona Dona means give, give, because I think organ donation is a two-way street. And I believe that everyone that is willing to accept, receive for himself or for his loved ones must be prepared to give. So, people, now is the time to talk about your willingness and positive attitude to your relatives and to your closest friends. Because in the end, they are the ones that have to decide. People, now it's the time to start sharing lives. Because after all, organ donation 
is the ultimate example of recycling. <laughs> well, thank you for listening to that. But uh, I have something else for you. Because life is full of surprises, as we all know. Let me introduce my daughter, Pin. Pin, where are you? This is Pin. Pin is 14 now, and this lady has a big soul. Her voice is her talent. She actually won a, a, a talent show with that on television. And she's going to sing a song for us about respect for life, because after all, that's what we're here for. Pin, what are you going to sing for us? The colors of the wind. Colors of the wind. All right. Well, let's stand over here then. I'll give you the mic. <laughs> Blow us away, Pink. Oh. 
Peter van der Est and Pien van der Est. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, sharing that story and sharing that song with us. Bedankt voor dit mooie liedje. Uh, Donna Donna is a Dutch initiative. Yes, it's a Dutch initiative. Will it stay or, uh, uh, Dutch? Yeah, or? sure. No, well, uh, my intention is because organ donation is, a, is an uh, international affair. So I would like to roll out uh, Donna Donna and uh, really go to, into a new era uh, about this. Okay. And so uh, I've talked to, uh, to Eurotransplant about this. And uh, they really uh, uh, are in, into it, so uh, they want to help me. But uh, you know, I can tell the story to everyone. Sure. Uh, but I'm not a manager anymore. So. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully, telling and sharing your story yes. here at TEDx Amsterdam will help you, because the the folks at Fellow Media have been working really hard there. Have almost all the talks that have been recorded today yeah. are put online. So your talk will also be online this evening. It's right. incredible. So let's spread the word. Thank you, Thank you again, Mr. Thank Peter you. and Pink. Thank you all.